All right. It's been probably about two weeks since I did a video of me driving. But today I'm going to talk about music. And just some things about music that I truly appreciate. And I'm very limited in what I listen to. Um, I describe what I listen to as angry lesbian music. You know, like... I basically listen to all female singers for the most part. There's a few others thrown in there, like... Well, that's not a true statement. I only really buy female singers, and I mostly listen to female singers. Like, just now I was listening to Toto, because the song Africa is one of the most amazing songs ever, ever done. <clears throat> Which brought me to this video, actually. Um, but I happen to... This happens to me more often with female singers than it does with male singers. And female songwriters more so than male songwriters. And I may just be some sort of a weirdo, but I don't think I am. I don't think I'm the only person out there that this happens to. But when you hear a piece of music, and I see it on the movies all the time, where people are at an opera or something, or they're listening to some classical music, piece of music, and they start crying. I'm not really into opera because it's just something that I don't really get. I mean, I understand the power of the voice. A lot of the words I don't get because most of the opera I've heard has always been in a foreign language, and I speak very little Spanish. Tu trabaja mañana? Mañana? Mañana. Yeah, you see, I fucked that up too. But, um, like, listening to Toto, just the power in the words and the voices, especially when the higher voice comes in, the second singer. Every time I hear that song, it drives me to an extreme emotional reaction where... The only way I can really put it is it's awe-striking. Like, this huge wave of emotion comes over me, and it's not any one emotion. There's sadness, joy, wonder. Um, everything you can imagine comes at me at that point, except for hate and sorrow. There's a difference between sadness and sorrow. And I often get this because of the tone of somebody's voice and the words. I remember when I was talking to Kristen Hirsch, the one time that I was able to carry on a brief conversation with her, I went to a book signing of hers. And then I got to see her the next night, my second time. That was her solo. The first time I saw her was with Throwing Muses the year before. Well, I didn't get this out completely right because I told her that the music is not important to me. It's the words, and that's not exactly true because I think the music, and this is from a non-musician standpoint. I'm a person who has a fascination with words and how people string them together and the melody that these words can have strung together in the poetry. But, like, if you ever read any of Kristen Hirsch's lyrics, or if you just listen to her talk in an interview. She has such a unique and mystifying way of speaking. It's absolutely amazing. Like, just listening to her talk, I get that wave of emotion. And it's so strange because it hits right in the heart and then it just spreads throughout your body. And the last place it hits is my eyes and I start to tear up. But it's not, again, it's not tears of sorrow. It's just tears of being overwhelmed like seeing a I don't know I tried to explain this or I asked a guy that I was seeing a couple years ago one day I was working and um, I asked him if he ever had points where he just stopped and looked at everything and was just hit by and I may start tearing up now I'm kind of but I asked him, do you ever get so 
awestruck and amazed by everything around you, just the beauty of it all, that it just, you feel like your heart's going to explode. Motherfucker! Anyway, sorry, I'm driving. People who drive badly and don't use fucking turn signals piss me off. But anyway, I digress. Um, It just feels like your heart's going to explode because there's so much emotion going into it at one time that you feel like you can't contain it and that it's just too much. But it's the most wonderful feeling in the world. I get that often when I listen to Kristen Hirsch or I listen to Natalie Merchant the song Africa by Toto and it's it's just a combination but mostly it's the words and the tone of their voice like Natalie Merchant has the most emotional voice I have ever heard and I will say songs that she sings like um, I wasn't a fan of the album Tiger Lily because it went away from what I was used to hearing from her which was stories about social issues and political issues and things that were important to me and then she kind of turned into the uh, towards more of the love emotions and relationships and stuff and I don't want to hear that because I deal with that all on my own and it's good to know that there are people out there talking about that stuff because other people can relate to that I'm just very I'm an odd character but anyway it's, it's just amazing that a two or three minute song can provoke such a reaction in somebody that they feel absolutely every emotion that you can feel all at one time. And um, it's very strange because from the first time I heard that song by Toto, I had that reaction. And the first time I heard Kristen Hirsch, I had that reaction. Or, well, I actually heard Throwing Muses first, but I I say Kristen Hirsch because she's the main songwriter, singer of Throwing Muses right now. I mean, her sister Tanya did do a little bit of songwriting and singing when she was in the band, but it was, you know, she's more on the pop side, whereas Kristen Hirsch is not really a pop singer. And don't get me wrong, uh, Tanya Donnelly is fucking amazing. She doesn't provoke that emotion in me. But I like her music because it's fun. And her lyrics are amazing. I don't understand much of what her or Kristen Hirsch are saying, because they have, they're both poets, there's no other way to put it, along with Natalie Merchant, anybody who can put a song out that puts that emotion in you, and I will say, there are a couple instrumentals that I have heard that have sparked that emotion, Um, the theme song for Chariots of Fire, Uh, Not a lot of people have heard of the duo John and Mary, which Mary Ramsey is now the lead singer for 10,000 Maniacs, and John Lombardo is one of the founding members of 10,000 Maniacs, but he left after the album The Wishing Chair because he felt the band was going in a direction he wasn't, if I remember that correctly from interviews that I've read. But um, he's more on the folky side, and they were going in a slightly different direction, which I've always considered the 10,000 Maniacs an alternative folk band, but they have a song called Maiden of the Mist, or Maid of the Mi- Maiden of the Mist, which, you know, if you're from New York, you know that's a boat that sails around in Niagara Falls, and it takes you really close to the falls and stuff, but it's, um, I haven't listened to it in years, but I do believe it's just a piano and a viola, but it's amazing. And another one is um, La Fortuna. I think I got that right. I don't remember if that's the whole, and I may be getting this wrong, because I don't know much about music or reading music or anything. I think it's a sonnet. As I said, I probably am getting that wrong. But it was just absolutely, you know, all those emotions at once. 
and I'm supposed to be listening to 10,000 Maniacs right now, the Fredonia recordings, Hope Chest, and I apparently turned my radio down too low, because I have the shittiest radio in my Jeep, it's specifically set for, um, Sirius Radio, and I won't do Sirius Radio until they take Breitbart off their airwaves. So I listen to NPR, and I get that maybe be 10 miles outside of my house, and then it goes to static. But if I turn over to another NPR music or radio station, they're just playing classical music. And I do like classical music. It's just not something that I'll listen to on a regular basis. It kind of is a snooze fest for me. Uh, and I know I've babbled quite a bit, and I just hope you can decipher what I'm trying to say about the power of music and whatnot. Because, I mean, just listen to Natalie Merchant sing, or listen to Kristen Hurst sing, and actually listen to Kristen's words, because she's not the world's best singer. She's got a great voice, it's very unique. It's easy for me to sing along to because it's not as high as, you know, most singers, female singers' voices are. Same with Natalie Merchant. She tends to be on the lower end. But I'll tell you what, when Natalie decides she's going to use that voice, there is no other voice in this world that has that much power and emotion. I don't care what people say about Mariah Carey. She sucks as a singer. Celine Dion sucks as a singer. But Natalie Merchant, she actually has power in her voice and emotion. And that emotion can drive your emotions. And the same with Kristen Hurst when she uses her voice in certain ways. Especially when she does that thing where her voice kind of rolls or whatever. You see it mostly in her earlier music, but on the album Paradise Purgatory, she uses that sort of style on the song Lazy Eye. It's just, you know, her thing and all that, but if y'all understand what I'm saying, that's great. If not, I just kind of look like a babbling idiot. I was really going to do a video this morning. I planned on it of another topic that I'll get to at another time when I'm more comfortable to speak about it because I'm in too far or not far enough in the stages of something I'm going through to feel comfortable enough to talk about it because I still feel like I'm probably going to be a big failure. But I always feel like I'm going to be a big failure. But in this case, I don't feel like I'm a big failure because I think a lot of people can understand what I'm saying when it comes to that emotion, that music can charge in a person. Um, It's just amazing and I wish I could give you specific songs by both of them. Kristen Hirsch and Natalie Merchant, that is. All I can say is every song at a different point. From 10,000 Maniacs. Throwing Muses, Kristen Hirsch, 50 Foot Wave. At some point, each song has done that. And another thing about... um, And I know, who wants to watch an over 13 minute video of me just babbling about nothing, but I do have some good insights and I do have a working brain, so it may be okay to listen to me babble for a little while. Anyway, I I lost my train of thought, that's very common with me because I always have 60 million things going on in my head at once. Just, I hope people can understand what I'm saying or trying to say. I don't have the best time with getting my thoughts from my head to my tongue. I do much better when I write it down, but it's been so long since I've written anything that I've forgotten how to make that travel from my head to my hand. But, as I've heard many times in lyrics from Ms. Hirsch, my mouth works quite well. My mouth is working, but it's a little defective when things come out of it. Good teeth. Just wanted to show that. Never had braces. Anyway, I remember um, 
the first song I heard from 10,000 Maniacs. It was like the weather. And I saw on MTV late at night, it was probably about two in the morning. I was 16, I do believe. And as soon as I thought, saw that video, I just fell in love with 10,000 Maniacs, especially Natalie Merchant. And just that voice. And it's very rare for certain um, music to stick with me because, like, I used to be a huge Indigo Girls fan. Yeah, I used to be a huge, some truckers beeping at me for some reason. I used to be a huge Indigo Girls fan, but I feel like I've grown in a different direction than they have. So I don't really listen to them much, not even their older stuff. And I think that's kind of why um, I don't really appreciate Natalie Merchant's music solo because we've gone, we've grown in different directions, which I will say, so far her best album is The House Carpenter's Daughter. And none of, uh, none of the music on there is anything she's written. It, they're all covers of other songs. And most of it's like, you know, old folk songs or hymnals, Poor Wayfaring Stranger, Sally Ann, um, Crazy Man Michael, just to name a few. But there are spots in all of those songs where she uses that amazing voice and it's just outstanding. But anyway, I'm going to uh, cut this off now because we're going on 17 minutes here. And if you appreciate what I'm saying or you understand, that's great. If not, hopefully someday you'll hear a piece of music or a voice or words that will let you feel exactly what I'm trying to describe. But you all have a great day. I look like shit today. Holy fuck balls.